Hi everybody, something is not talked about a lot in martial arts is how to control the aggression that you're cultivating in your martial arts. Nobody's discussing this, but Ian and I are gonna discuss it today, talking about what you need to do, some ways you can do it, and how it relates to you, and really just getting the idea in your head so you can keep from unintentionally hurting other people. Hi everybody, I'm Joel Ledlow, Evolution JKD. I am joined as I often am by Ian. Uh, we have great conversations uh, and have for over a decade and just uh, cool topics. And we wanted to share this one and discuss this one with you. Uh, the idea is uh, safeguarding your family and loved ones and even your friends uh, while you're still cultivating all the necessary traits and, and um, attributes that you want to as a martial artist and where there's a danger and kind of some of the stuff you need to do to, again, safeguard yourself from doing something you don't want to do. Um, martial arts is about creating violence, but just like we take, we put safeguards into our training, we, you know, we're a mouth guard, we, we go slower, we're, we're protective of our training partners because we're cultivating skill and we're developing, you know, technique or whatever you want to. You're, you're trying to learn how to punch better, but I don't want to you know, do that at the cost or the detriment of my training partners. The same thing, I want to be a better martial artist, but not to the detriment of the people I'm trying to protect. And you just have to be mindful with it because the the reactions that we develop in a training situation, you know, they're too stimulus. And it's, it's not about an individual. It's not, I'm not reacting specifically to in, it's to a movement here. Um, and where that really runs into problems for, because some of you are out there are like, well, dude, like, come on, like, I'm not gonna do that. Like, hey, I'm just gonna jump into a guard. And that's fine if you train that way, but we're Jeet Kune Do, our reaction is always to hit. The always think hit means bang, it's coming out. That's it. So it's a little bit different. And uh, we have to be a lot more mindful of it because, you know, uh, like gang, I, I'll let Ian talk a little bit. Oh, Ninja Cat, everybody say hi, Ninja Cat, Ninja Cat. You didn't even see him jump up, but he jumped up. And he'll be on my lap for the rest of the time. So uh, I did a crap load of training. And I, I mean, I was in Los Angeles. I I was uh, working security. I was training with Jerry Petit. I was training with Ed Monahan. I was training with a whole bunch of other people. Um, and, you know, just really phenomenal martial artists and really great training partners. But I was also applying it and, and working in the world. And I was a single guy who lived by himself. Um, in an apartment, you know, I didn't even have a cat then. Go for it. Um, you know, it's not a big deal. There's not like I'm going to get caught unawares, uh, except when I'm out. I did, and I did even then have to start putting safeguards in uh, for my friends. And kind of the running joke is, you know, you go, hey, hey, pa, and you hit someone, you know, you hit your buddy while you're telling them a joke. And then I had one of my buddies go, oh, dude, that was a little bit. So it was like, ooh, I have to be mindful of, of my my power output even then because a mild a mild tap from me might come in a way that's unexpected for a friend who doesn't train in martial arts and and then i met my wife and so with catherine came two cats yay cats not this cat because it was a while ago but two cats um and my lovely wife um and then she was pregnant and I started noticing that I was really protective and really jumpy. Uh, I remember we were walking once and there was two women walking with a dog and the dog sort of went Ugh, and lunged towards Catherine. I was on the other side and I took a step towards him with full intent to kick the dog in the face, continue on, punch both women in the face. I was like, hmm, hey, Joel, you're gonna have a baby. And while being protective is good, just taking somebody out who's walking their dog. And gang, the dog was on a leash and it was nowhere close to hurting my wife, but it was a sudden movement at, at a close proximity to someone I really cared deeply for uh, and with my unborn child. Uh, so hyper protective uh, and through training, I was geared up and I was able to restrain myself, but I did take a full step towards them and then pull myself right back. So that began my journey into really putting in some of the safeguards that I have installed now. And 
and uh, we'll kind of get into that. And Ian, I'll let you ramble on for a little bit, and then uh, we'll come back to other stuff. I think the thing to keep in mind when you're training martial arts is that the first and maybe the lowest level that we cultivate is a reaction. Always think hit, always think hit, always think hit. And when we're fed a constant stimulus of you know, something coming at us from different angles or things being fast and how close we pay attention to reading somebody's telegraph of movement, it's, it becomes like a very large gradient that mixes between a lot of different movements that no, don't necessarily have the intent on somebody trying to hit you. And that's the hard part that I've myself run into. And that's the part that, you know, maybe I haven't met that myself, but something that we have to be mindful of as martial artists, because somebody that does this of picking their arm up, like they're going to hit you could be somebody coming up and saying, Hey, I'm giving you a hug. And if you don't expect it and your reaction that you train is, well, this, you can't see it, but you know, hit something. And then I had, I, you know, it just reminds me uh, of a buddy of mine from when I was at university. And uh, the, at the time, I hadn't had a lot of, I had wrestling background, but I didn't have a lot of striking training. And uh, my buddy Vic was uh, brown belt in Kempo. And I came up and I saw him and I ran up and I was like, hey, and he's just walking on campus. But I got really close to him and put my hand on his shoulder and he turned around and was like, with a fist, ready to throw at me. And I was like, whoa, and he's like, dude, like, sorry, but what are you doing? Like, he, I, cause I startled him, you know, he didn't know who it was and it was coming to it. And, and that's part of it. Um, I had to, with security, you know, you, you've got to be a little bit, but it's, you're turned on. And I think that's another aspect that martial artists have to kind of figure out is when to turn it on and off. Uh, because to be perfectly honest, and I've done it where I'm like, boom, you know, you're fully charged and everything is running at 100% and you're hypersensitive, hyper aware, plugged into the entire space. That was when I was working. And, you know, you're in the middle of, of, a, of a, you know, space and music is going and it's dark and you're watching literally in a, a crowd with a few hundred people in it and moving through it. It's a different sense than when you're, you know, walking down the street with somebody um, or, or being out at home. for dinner. You know, yeah. sitting at the table. Yeah, just at home. The other important thing to remember as well is that you are cultivating constantly an imagination for violence if you are training for that specific purpose, uh, more specifically in either sport or combat related things, right? You have to be able to imagine, you know, an opponent in front of you and you have to be able to imagine, you know, the, the flow of combat or the reactions that you're supposed to have in order to, you know, help complete yourself as that part of the artist. But uh, just as Sifu Joel told me when I was a lot younger is that if you don't balance that out and you don't make sure that you still maintain a piece of the reality that you still live in around loved ones and around, you know, because we don't fight every day, we don't get into combat every day and, you know, or at least hopefully not. Um, hopefully you have a place of peace and, and, you know, safety that you can come home to. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I want to add to that, uh, going with what I was saying before you, if you, if you have this high level alertness and this aggressive mental state, which is what I was referring to before, if you have that, or like, you know, like if you're sparring with somebody or you're going to go into, uh, even, you know, go into sport fighting. Uh, going to a cage or a, a ring and you're gonna do that even if you're even if you're competing you know like if you're playing football or, or hockey or, or what have you you're gonna go into a different mental state when you're there and it's gonna be hyper aware and aggressive in that structure we're talking about fighting and and cultivating that aggressiveness as we do as Jeet Kune Do practitioners or cultivators um, as martial artists in general of doing combat with another person who is trying to do you Harm. physical harm with the potential of death being on the line not just like hey dude i'm gonna shove you it's like no this could yeah. this could turn into someone goes to the hospital or dies um so that's the the mental state that we train with so the aggressiveness is really really high to counter that that serious threat um you can't hold that all the time i mean that that's just not positive it, it's detrimental to your health and and your mental health and i think even your physical health yeah. i'm just holding it's on to exhausting. that much negativity and that much alertness with that mindset and you have to 
I was always told when I was coming up, you know, the, the light switch, it's, it's a light switch, you gotta be able to turn it on or off. And I think that's the big key is you have to, you have to be able to turn that aspect of yourself on and off, just like a light switch. And it's just like coming into a room. Um, and unfortunately, you know, that's sort of the price to pay in order to not be a total jackass um, and just be a total, you know, like make everyone afraid of you for all the wrong reasons because you don't have any control over yourself is is to to cultivate that ability to turn the light switch on. Oh, crap. <laughs> I got to go. Um, and then it's all on. And I think that if you're put in that situation, if you do the process and you, it's going to be a process, it's not something you can just be like, oh, he just told me about that. I can do that right now. Sorry, gang. Uh, it, it takes years to, to practice. And as your skill goes up, you have to do it. And it's a lot of constant recategorizing. And you know what? In the time where you have to mentally turn the light switch on and power your system up, that's your transition from, hey, I'm just sitting here with a cat on my lap to, oh, I got to fight for my life. That may take you a moment. And in that moment, you might die. But, uh, you know, gang, I, I'm I'm pretty good at fighting. I can, can kind of throw down. Um, I haven't had to lay hands on anybody in about 12 years. So, you know, outside of training, I haven't physically laid the hands on somebody in 12 years. So, and, and to kind of wrap things up, uh, as you are cultivating as a martial artist, or we rather, it's your initial cultivation to, you know, bring the awareness, to bring the reactions, to bring the proper response from hopefully the right stimulus. But as you get better and you step into, you know, that higher realm of awareness, it's also up to you to maintain a sense of compassion and knowing that your loved ones are not there with you. Uh, if you have a training partner or something, that's a little bit different because I don't know, you know when I'm, I'm with Sifu Joel, I don't, I don't try I, things, you know, <laughs> I, which is, which is a good thing. Um, but even then I put, I put mental restraints on myself because, and, and that's one of the differences between being like, Sifu Joel and Joel, because and I, I like I teach kids, gang. So you can't come in there and be like, I'm knuckle dragger, hardcore, bam! Ah, oh, sorry, five year old Timmy. You know, you, like, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, like, it, no one's going to do it. And the kids aren't going to want to come in there. And that's not the whole point, anyway. The point is to to give them that positivity of martial arts. That's what I got. And yes, I as an individual train martial arts to the to the application level uh, and and have applied it. But that's not what most people are getting out of martial arts. And that's not really what I want to share because 99% of my students are just wanting the positivity, the, the reaping the benefits of, of doing it. But one of the things that I also have to put in there and I have to make sure and safeguard for myself, for my students and for my family and friends is, is that I'm not just, you know, I went to the grocery store today. Like someone moves, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm punching somebody's grandma because she was asking me to grab a box of cereal off the shelf for her. Like, we don't want to do you that. Know, you know, you can't just be hardwired to, to just lay into somebody. But I think what you have to do is you have to put into, you are, you can't be hardwired. And yes, you can't be hardwired, but you have to create spaces where you allow yourself to be in a almost a vulnerable state where you are it's put to the side it's almost you always have to take that persona that aspect of yourself and say look i'm going to be over there or i'm going to turn it off or whatever mental image you want to put into it you know i'm with the cat on my lap someone comes in i have to like you know punch in the code and turn it on um you know crazy analogy if you know police officer has a, a uh, a, a sidearm with them but they all have mechanisms to go through it they might drop to it and we could drop into stance and be ready but it's dropping into a stance to be ready and then firing off instead of just firing off and again Jeet Kune Do if, if I'm full on and somebody moves like you know three people approach me and I've got my kids behind me power up let's go somebody moves they're getting full unrestrained Joel who's got nothing in there. But if I'm in with kids teaching a class, I've got to put lots of mental restrictions on myself and and whatever that is for you of how you can 
segment that and put yourself in the mind frame, frame of mind, the mindset to, to say, I will allow this. Because I have in my kids' class, my junior's class or the teenagers, they bonk me. Even in my adult class, I get bonked because I can't. Like no one showed up to, to get, you know, hit in the throat. Um, it's not maybe Ian, but uh, different story. But even then, like when we're training, I have to I have to be a little bit uh, careful about how I do it and how much of of Joel I allow to come out. Um, you know, it's uh, I just forgot about this. There's a I, it's funny it was we were you and I were prepping about this, but I, I had forgotten about this. There was a, a mental image, and I think that's really really important. Uh, Ian had brought this up of your imagination when you're cultivating all aspects. And for me, it was, it's sort of like having this caged beast and you're cultivating this this monster inside of you, this beast mode, you know, we're talking beast mode, yeah. And, and, and coming out and I want that beast to come out and do it. But then you have to be able to train that that beast and you have to be able to leash it and and restrain it and and pull it back in so it's 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 pulled in and caged in. Uh, that way it doesn't just go around attacking people. You know, if you have a guard dog, you want the guard dog to be guarding, guarding you, not, just, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not guarding don't, just don't, itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've heard, I've heard, uh, from other people who've talked about, uh, canine police dogs, uh, that when they're at home, like they're like besties with the kids, like they're super amazing. But then, uh, you know, whoever the officer is, whenever they get dressed in uniform, the dog's like, shifts and it, it's that i've heard it from a couple of stories that the dog shifts and it, i think the officers do as well i know that when i did my preparation what you know if i prepare to go to class i make a mental shift a lot of people go through that that, that thing of of making a, a shift mentally getting into character sport. Yeah. Ian, you've talked about this before it's getting into character on stage you've got to be your character on stage and and maybe that's a great great way to think about it you have to be a different character and that character has attributes and moves in a way, or if you're going to work, you know, or you have a big business meeting, um, uh, you know, whatever it is, or I've got to go to X, Y, or Z, even going to the gym. Like for me, I have, my brain starts shifting when I go to the gym. And you have to apply those same things to your martial training, especially as a Jeet Kune Do practitioner, because we are always think hit. And if you're always thinking about coming out, you know, you're, you catch something in your peripheral, your awareness is much keener through years of training and, you know, boom. And it's your, you've gone off. And if you're reacting with a bill G, you know, you poke somebody in the eye um, and it's not their fault. It's, it's not the right. point. And it's, it, it's not really your fault either. If you, you don't know this, if you're ignorant of this, but now you've been told, so train it. Um, and then, start putting that in there because just because it's not your fault doesn't mean that no damage you can't has been do done something yeah. to to offset it. and it is it is you know if i if i have a stick and i hit somebody in the head with it or I just swing a stick around wildly oh sorry you got hit in the head i didn't mean to but you're you swinging a stick around <laughs> um it's like you know yeah. don't just don't just swing around randomly so we're kind of um, curious we would like to know your thoughts regarding the situation have you yeah. experienced anything or do you have anything to add to this conversation uh we're going to be uploading videos like this a lot more because we're really interested in getting into the philosophical aspects of martial arts that we don't really see a lot of people talking about so be sure to like and subscribe and give us any kind of feedback that you have sifu joel do you have anything with us before we go uh, i just say there's there's lots of things that are not talked about in the martial arts world uh, and specifically in the Jeet Kune Do world that I'm going to be talking about because they they should have been talked about. These are subjects, topics, uh, philosophies, things of of importance as a martial artist that you should know. But I don't hear people talking about them, and and they should. And there are, a lot of them are second generation people like me. I just don't hear it. Um, so while they might be really skilled, I don't want that to be left out because I found them as valuable. This is one of those things. Um, yeah, so drop those comments down there for me or for Ian. Uh, he has a lot of great insight as well. We'll be coming back with more stuff later. All right, everybody. Bye.